Hello. Hi everyone. Today we'll continue looking at the Hong Mao Certified Engineer Question Bank. Next up is question 11. Question 11 is about modifying the contents of a file. When it comes to modifying file contents, this question mainly focuses on changing different content for different host groups. The file itself is the same, so please pay attention to that. We are modifying the same file, so we need to make sure that the file name is correct on all host groups, right? You have to write it correctly, just don't get the file name wrong. All the files need to remain consistent. On that basis, we then modify the content within each file. That's the main objective of this question. So, what about here? First, the question requires us to create a YML file. This is the same for all the questions. The file name must be written correctly. Also, pay attention, it needs to be run on all hosts. Uh, running on all our isms. That means all five nodes. All of them need to have the file name replaced. That's the first point. The second point is the content for the host in each group is different. This is divided by groups, not by one, two, three, four, etc. So we have a total of five hosts and three groups, and the content for each group is different. So this is one of our tasks. This is the main objective of this question, which is also what the question requires. There are a few key points to pay attention to here. First, you must make sure that the file names on all hosts are exactly the same. Second, when making changes for different groups, be careful not to misspell words or mix things up. Overall, this question isn't particularly difficult, but you need to pay attention to the details. Details are important. So let's take a look first. So how should we write this file? Actually, there's only one requirement for this question, which is to modify the file content. The only difference is that different hosts have different requirements. Next, let's take a look at how to write this for the question. First, let's let's start editing our file, okay? Let's begin editing the file. So when we're editing the file here, first, as for the directory, we're still going to edit it under our answer directory. Edit which file? Edit our... Well, what module do we use here? It is the copy module, which is the copy module. Of course, this copy is not like the CP command that copies from local to local. What is it more like? It is more like the SCP command, which is of course different from SCP. Yeah, it's not quite the same either. The main difference lies in the way they're written, but essentially they're pretty similar, right? Um, in both cases, we're connecting to the remote host through port 22 to transfer files. The only difference is that with the SCP command, we can only transfer to one host at a time, just one at a time. But with our playbook, as long as we specify a group, we can transfer to 10, 20, or even 30 hosts at once. Ah, so this is basically like a batch version of the SCP command. That's the main function of our copy module. Next, let's take a look at the specific steps. First, after we open and edit our file, the very first step is... So we start by specifying our name, host group, and task. Here, everyone should pay attention. Essentially, we have just one task, but within this task, we have three different requirements. So for this exercise, it's better to write it like this. First, we define a name. For example, what are we doing? Modifying a file, right? Modify file. As for the host group, you just write it under hosts, which includes all the host groups, all the hosts. So what exactly is the task? Well, this is where we need to split things up because the question requires three different file contents, each corresponding to a different host group. So our next step is to target these three host groups and perform operations accordingly. We can use a conditional statement here. Since we're using or here, right? We've written or. Of course, another way to write it is to split it into three main tasks, right? For example, the first one specifies the host as dev. The second one is our test and the third one is pro that works too so actually there's more than one way to do this uh, the method we're learning here is that we only need a single task and then for the specific options below we distinguish them using conditionals that works too both approaches are fine you can just go with whichever suits your own habits if you haven't really written this kind of thing before you can just follow along with the example here now let's start writing the task here we're using three tasks, so starting from the next line, we'll indent again and move to the next level. We're going to start creating what? The first task. 
As for the name of this task, let's just number them 1, 2, and 3 because in essence the content of our articles or the specific operations are actually the same. They're all just copying. So here we'll just use 1, 2, and 3. Right? It's 123. You can name it whatever you want. It depends on your mood. As long as you don't repeat it, it's fine. You can even write something here. For example, since there are not three host groups, right? If you are afraid of making mistakes or if it is more convenient for you, you can write the name of the host group here. Yeah, that's fine. For example, for the first one, you can write DV and then below, just change the content related to DV. For the second one, you can write test. And for the third, pro, right? Just modify them accordingly. This way things will look clearer and more specific, which is also fine. So just go with whatever naming convention you're comfortable with because the name itself doesn't have any real significance. In our answer file, the name is actually more like a comment. It's just that here it doesn't have a hash symbol, right? Normally our comments start with a hash. In general, we rarely write this in the file because comments don't have any real significance. So when you're taking the exam, there's no need to write comments. They're just a waste of time and writing them won't earn you any extra points. And it also won't affect the execution of your code in any way. So comments really don't serve much of a purpose. Here, the name field is actually similar to a comment. It doesn't really do anything either. It's just that every time we run a particular task, it displays this name like, hey, I'm running this. For example, when it gets to modify file, it shows this name and then starts executing the following content. Then when it gets to contact one, it moves on to the next task and so on, step by step. So it's basically just an identifier. It doesn't have any real significance, but it does let us see which step our task has reached. And if there's an error, you can use the name to pinpoint exactly which part of the task went wrong, making it easier to troubleshoot. That's the purpose of the name. It doesn't have much practical function. So here we can just... Next, let's just take a moment to talk about Ansible's copy module. This is actually the very first time that we're using the copy module as part of our workflow. So we're copying a file this time, right? So here we're going to copy something. What do we copy? Everyone should pay attention to this because this is the copy. Previously, we did use copy, but what we copied were templates. Actually, that's just like the previous question, question 10. In question 10, we copied a template. The module for templates is called template. And under the template module, we specify SRC and dist, the source address and the destination address. Now, uh, with the copy module here, of course, you can also specify the source and destination addresses. You can write them since the copy module is basically the CP command. SRC and dist are definitely supported features. It absolutely has this functionality. However, in our case here, we can't use SRC and dist you can use DES to specify the destination, that's fine, but SRC won't work. Because this time, when we're modifying the file, it's actually not just a simple copy. If you were simply copying a file, like in the previous exercise where we copied a template, using SRC and DES would be fine. But in this case, we're not just copying a file, everyone should pay attention to that. It's not just about copying the file over and being done with it, right? In our task, the requirement is that while the file is the same, the content within each of the three groups is different. That's a key requirement of this task. So for this problem, we actually need to use a special module or option within the copy module, which is called content. What is the main function of this? Normally, our CPE. When it comes to the pronoun S20, S2A represents the original address, right? The pronoun represents the target address and our contact represents the specified content to be written. Yes, to specify the content to be written. Dest is still the path to the target file. The function here is that it will directly replace the file's content without keeping the original content. This is one way to use the copy module. Next, let's first take a look. Uh, actually, the order here doesn't matter much. Just make sure you don't miss a host group or write the same host group twice. You can just follow the order given in the question. For example, for the first one, we have dev, right? Then here, we just write it directly. Uh, for dev, what is the requirement? It's this word. Ah, development. This is the first one. As for the second one, it's ours. Right? The second one is test, and the third one is pro. 
pro refers to production. So these are three different words. Now what else should we pay attention to here? Pay attention, pay attention. Because this isn't really a command. It's actually just one of our parameters. It's considered a parameter, so you need to pay attention to the case sensitivity of the parameter. Although for commands, we strictly require case sensitivity. For parameters, case sensitivity doesn't actually affect execution. However, the question specifically requires you to use uppercase. If you write it in lowercase, it's considered wrong. So here, using contact, let's first put development here. So how do we write the destination address? It's just a dest. Then at, well, the path here is the same for all three. All three are identical. You need to pay attention to this and make sure not to make a mistake. If you get any of them wrong, it won't work. Here, the three files are the same, but their contents are different. That's one of the requirements of this question. So that's the first one, right? Now for the second one, no need to rush to write it yet. Why not? Take a look at the overall content so far. Let's pause here for now, and you can review what's been done up to this point. What kind of effect does it have? Well, up to this point, what it actually does is change the contents of all these files to, well, to this one because we've specified all above. Uh, if what you specified above is, if it's low risk, then there's no problem here. And this part would be finished. The first section would be done, but that's not the case here. Here, what we're writing is, if you wrote two above, then you need to write a conditional statement below. The conditional statement should be written in this spot. That is when our host name is in a certain group. Uh, for example, in this scenario here, we'll write a variable for the host name. House name, right? Let's use it as the name of our main sentence is in our, for example, in groups, which is our dev group. If our host name is in the dev group, what effect does it have if it's in this group? That is, it allows all the files in our low risk group to become this word, but for the others, it doesn't have any effect. For example, the test group or the pros group won't be affected. This is the purpose of the condition. Here, it's actually a choice between two options. Either you write a condition, or you divide it into three main sections. If you split it into three main sections, you'll end up writing quite a lot. Because if you do that, what else do you need to write? You'd have to write name, host, and task again, right? In this case, we're just writing name and task once. After name and task, we use this condition to replace the rest. That's the first one. For the second one, let's continue writing over here. As for the name, ensure. Not to repeat it, and that's fine. Next, let's move on to Ansible 2. Here, we're on the second one, right? The second one, but the modules are all the same. All three use the copy module. If you don't want to write it out again, you can just copy and paste. That's totally fine. So the next step is to modify the second item. For the second item, our requirement is test, and note that the T is uppercase. In our host group, the T is lowercase, but here in the content, the T is uppercase. Please pay attention to this and make sure not to write it incorrectly or mix them up. All right, that's the first one. What about the second target address? The target address is the same. It's our target file in ETC. Okay, up to here. All right, this is the second type of check. Don't miss it. How do we write the check here? Actually, it's the same as above. Just keep it consistent with what we did earlier. So what's the difference here? When we write groups here, we just need to change it. Just switch it to test, and that's fine. This is our second one. Now the third one is the same by analogy. You can write it yourself. For the third one, we just write three. And then the next module remains unchanged. It still stays the same. Here, after we finish writing this, for the last one, for the last one, we are the pro group, right? The pro group refers to the word production. Similarly, everyone needs to write down the questions. After you finish writing, move on to the second part. Target address. No change. Finally just add a condition at the end. Uh, after you finish writing here, everyone, please pay attention at the end. Don't just copy things out of habit. Don't just copy without thinking. Uh, what do we need to distinguish at the end here? For the pro group, okay, this is our method for modifying file content. After you finish making changes, what can we do next? Right, then we can save them and verify. 
to save and verify, first we need to save this content. To execute, just use our Ansible Navigator command directly. Run the file we just wrote. M. Let's check the standard output to see the result. OK, there are no errors. Up to this point, the format is fine. But to see if it actually works, you can look here. You can see that each task is highlighted differently. See? 1, 2, 3, 4 are all counted separately. They're all counted separately. So what does this mean? It means we've divided them into four different groups, right? Look, node one is one group, right? Node two is another group. And what else? There's also node three and four, right? So three and six, 41 groups. As for five, note five, everyone pay attention. Note five here cannot be changed. Note five is not in the groups we require. Note five belongs to the balance group. It's not included in the three groups mentioned in our problem. So it's normal that it's not there. Don't worry if you see that I've changed four and wonder what to do about note five. It's fine, it's just not included. If you wanna verify at the end, you can add one more check. This is a specific verification, but as you can see here, there's no problem. Basically, that's it. So what's the best thing to do? It's best to double check whether you've spelled these words correctly. How do you check? Well, we use this. Catalan will do. All right, in the first group, it's the development environment, right? That's what we have there. And the second one, that's the test group, correct? The third one is proud. These are the main three words. Just check that there are no mistakes and that's fine. This is our question 11. The main thing to pay attention to is take out this, the four files for our host. To sum up, there are three files, each with four hosts, three files in total. You need to make sure they all correspond correctly and that the names are written accurately. Other than that, there aren't really any other complicated issues. So this is our question 11. Modifying the file content. But to be precise, you could say it's copying and that would be correct too. But in summary, what we're actually doing is modifying, modifying the file. We're using the copy module to make changes to the file content. Make sure to pay attention to the correspondence for each of the three hosts. They each have their own corresponding relationship. Actually, you can tell just from the initials, this word, right? DV, test, and pro are just the initials. Test is too short, so it's written out in full, while the other two are just initials. So after writing this, uh, this is our, our method for modifying file contents. Here, the main thing to pay attention to is that there are two main ways to write this. Basically, you can either split it into three big tasks, or you can write three conditions within a single task. Both methods are fine, so you can choose whichever you like. Honestly, the difference isn't significant. Maybe just a few seconds, not even tens of seconds. The time it takes to type is only a few seconds, so the impact is minimal. So that's our 11th question, modifying file contents. If you need the complete question bank, you can leave a comment below and purchase the most reliable question bank at the best price. That's all for today. Goodbye, everyone.